John's Church and it is so great to be with you today. Uh, I hope that you have all had a really fantastic week. I've had a week of annual leave so I am feeling very, very chilled out this morning. And uh, whether you're joining us this morning on Facebook or on YouTube or whether you're here with us on Zoom, you are really, really welcome. We're really glad you're here. I was um, reflecting and thinking about uh, this morning's service and as I was kind of praying and preparing for the service I just felt like God was really glad um, to be with us. I, I just kind of had this sense of God smiling as, as he looked at us all in our uh, respective homes, doing whatever it is that we're doing, gathering together in this uh, way that feels a bit more normal now but is still not totally normal. So um, let's enjoy being together this morning. Let's enjoy the presence of God and uh, the, the presence on the screen of one another too. We've got loads and loads happening during this morning's service so you will get to see lots of different faces. Um, now thinking about how we gather you'll know that we've been talking the last few weeks about going back to church on June the 27th. We are really looking forward to that date. There's lots happening in the church building to get us as ready as we can possibly be uh, for us to be gathered back together. Now obviously we still don't know exactly what Boris is going to say but we're hanging on in there um, very hopefully uh, and looking forward to being in the same place again so please do um, be praying for that date be praying for everything that's happening uh, in the life of church as we get ready to be gathered all back together now we've also been talking for the last few weeks about how we serve in the life of St John's Church um, and you will know that I have said the same thing over and over again. There are loads of things that we have done historically as church and they are all really valuable and important but our life together may look different as we go back. We may not pick up everything that we were doing before lockdown immediately afterwards. Um, and this is a time for you to be thinking, not where do I need to volunteer? How many jobs can I get involved in at church? How many different areas of ministry can I serve in? But more to be thinking, what is it that God has put on my heart? What is it that I am passionate about? What is that? area of church life or ministry or ministry in the world that makes me want to get out of bed in the morning and how can I get involved in that. Um, we want to hear from you about what it is that you are passionate about, what it is that you feel called to. Um, now there are loads of areas of service in the life of the church and it may be one of those or it may be something different and that is absolutely fine to help you in your thinking and just for us to reconnect on July the 11th we're going to be having a church life fair and I'm hoping that we'll be able to provide you with a few more details of that in the next week or so and that's going to be an opportunity uh, to have a, a short church service which will be a Cafe style service so it's going to be a little different to uh, how we normally do things on a Sunday morning the great news is it's hopefully going to involve lots of coffee and lots of pastries and then there's going to be the opportunity to walk around different spaces in the church where different areas of church life and ministry will have set up um, information about what it is that that they do or that that we're passionate about and uh, we'd love you to get involved there if you lead a ministry uh, no doubt we'll be speaking to you very soon about how you can get involved if you don't lead a ministry and you just want to have a look around um, then you are absolutely invited to do that and I'm hoping there's going to be like give away interesting things as well as long as we can do it all in a Covid secure way so lots to look forward to. We also have on July the 18th the church hog roast. Um, this summer is for parties and uh, so we would love to welcome our church family to a hog roast all the details are on the website. The cost is £10 per person and you can pay that on the website too. If cost is a problem, just let us know and uh, we'll happily work that out with you. But we would love for the church family to gather there. 
Also, please look on the website for details of the Eco Church Festival, which is happening on the 13th of June. That's next Saturday. So if you are interested in learning more about how the church can be involved in getting to net zero, um, please do join in with that conference. It's a national conference, but it's being hosted by the Diocese of Sheffield, and we would love you to be there. So... I'm going to invite Suzanne now, and Suzanne is just going to tell us a little bit, um, actually she could probably tell us a little bit about what's been happening in Wing Gardens through this week, but she is going to tell us about what is happening at Wing Gardens today. So good morning Suzanne. Good morning Church, good morning Jo, I hope you're all okay. Yeah, we've had quite a busy week this week, we've had our half term Healthy Holidays programme and we've had the joy and excitement of um, working with over 92 uh, different children, um, probably about 160 altogether um, interactions. Um, so yeah, the most exciting and noisiest day I have to say was on Friday when we were pizza making um, outside the Tara building. But today is really exciting too, because we have the launch of our first messy church. Um, so after consultation and speaking to people on the Wing Gardens, people who used to be part of the previous community church, um, we've come up with a structure that is slightly different than what happened previously, but hopefully um, still going to be as enjoyable, um, aimed at families, we will, today we're going to be looking at the theme of um, um, the scripture in Genesis where God looked at Adam and said it wasn't good for Adam to be alone and so therefore he created Eve and out of that we're looking at what does it mean to be community, why do we need each other and why does God bless us with such a brilliant community. So we'll be exploring that through crafts, through planting seeds, through songs, through food, and uh, through scripture as well. So yeah, really looking forward to it today. The only caveat is people must, must book in order to come along. We must follow COVID restrictions. And so people must book if they want to uh, come along and join in. And how can people book, Suzanne? Uh, need to contact me either through an email or through uh, a text. Um, yeah, do it that way, please. Brilliant. Well, we will be praying for Messy Church and super excited to hear about this last week. So massive thanks, Suzanne, and we hope it goes really, really well. Okay. Um, now, some uh, more church family news before we begin our song worship. And that is a massive congratulations to Janice and John Brocklebank, who celebrated their golden wedding yesterday. That is 50 years of marriage, uh, incredible. And uh, I know that their family have been celebrating them over these last few days, but we want to pass on our love and congratulations as well. Um, hope you had a fabulous day, Janice and John, and uh, sending you lots of love and congratulations from the whole St. John's family. Now, shall we pray together? Lord God, we come before you and acknowledge your love and your goodness this morning. And we pray that as we worship together now, we would know your presence. We would encounter your Holy Spirit and we would meet with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let your fire fall down We welcome you with praise We welcome you with praise Almighty God of love We welcome in this place We welcome you with praise We welcome you with praise Almighty God of love We welcome in this place Let every heart at dawn Let every soul awake Almighty God of love We welcome in this place We welcome you with praise We welcome you Amazing. Thank you to our worship team. If you could just all check on your screens that you are muted. Everybody should be muted, but I, I think there may be uh, a couple of people who aren't totally muted. So just have a little check now in the corner of your screen and uh, you, you should be on mute. Okay, we're going to go to Carol now and Carol is going to be leading our all age time together. So good morning, Carol. Good morning. So we've got a fun game to start with today. I'm going to say three things and I want you to guess if I'm telling you the truth. Okay, ready? First thing, I wonder if you've seen a picture of a crocodile with its huge mouth and sharp teeth. Well, is it true that a crocodile can't stick its tongue out? Do you think it can stick its big tongue out? Well, it can't. A crocodile has a, a tongue that's fixed to the floor of its mouth. Let's drop my notes. So a crocodile can't stick its tongue out like we can. So that's true. So is this true? It's impossible to hum a tune while you're holding your nose. So while everyone's muted, close your mouth, start to hum, and then hold your nose. Yep, the humming stops. It is impossible to hum while you are holding your nose. So that's true as well. So last fact, the sun is always shining. Now, you might say, well, it was yesterday, but I'm not so sure this morning. Do you think that the sun is always shining? Is that true? Yes, it is. Even when it's raining or when it's dull and cloudy, even if we can't see the sun shining, it is still shining because that's what the sun must do. It must shine. So that is true. Maybe you can ask someone else these things. The sun always shines? Can a crocodile stick its tongue out? Can you hum while you're holding your nose? Well, those facts are all interesting and they're all true. And it's really important to know if something is true or not. St. Paul wrote lots of letters to churches and we'll hear one of part of one later this morning from the Bible and Paul always wanted to know and believe what was really true even if telling them the truth was difficult. You see Jesus had made such a difference to Paul that he wanted other people to know Jesus but it was sometimes hard and it got him into trouble when people refused to believe him. But Paul never gave up. He knew it was the most important thing to do. And that as he talked about Jesus, God's grace, God's power would reach more and more people who would discover that as God loved them, God's grace and God's power would reach them and God's kingdom would grow more. 
Paul knew the truth that God was with him whatever was happening in good times and even in difficult times. Paul could hold on to that truth. He knew and understood that Jesus died on the cross for him. And he knew that even when his life finished on earth, at the end of his life here, God would welcome him into heaven forever. So he always had something really good to look forward to, even when life was tough. So here are three things that Paul would want us to know and to remember. Number one, God is always good. He can't be anything else. Maybe you've heard it said like this, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Even if we might feel God isn't with us, he is. He promises he will never ever leave us, that he will help us through everything in life. And God always, whatever happens, God always keeps his promises. The second true fact, God loves me, always. The Bible tells us God is love. Paul wrote to one church and reminded them that nothing could separate them from God's love. God may not like some of the things we do, but the true fact is that he always loves us. And true fact number three, God always wants the best for us. Paul knew that. It kept him going when life was hard, when things were difficult, when things seemed to be going wrong, or even when he was in prison. Paul knew that God wanted the best for him and would work things out that were good for Paul. So three true facts that Paul will want us to remember. God is always good. God always loves me, even if it doesn't feel like it. Trust the truth. Don't trust the feeling. And thirdly, God always wants the best for me. So remembering what is true helps us even when things are a bit tough. So see if you can remember those three things. God is always good. God always loves me. God always wants the best for me. And if you're watching this with somebody else, see if they can remember them, not just today, but tomorrow and every day. Oh, and here's a final fun fact. I wonder if this is true. Maybe you can work it out and try it later on. It's impossible to lick your elbow. Have fun finding that out too. Bye. Oh, thank you, Carol. Um, well, are we going to uh, all be trying that on screen or off screen? Uh, good uh, fun facts and challenges there. OK, we're going to go to Sophie now. And uh, Sophie, good morning. Hello. Um, Sophie's actually going to, we're going to turn the tables and Sophie is going to interview me, but um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background first and we're going to watch uh, just a, a minute long video. Um, I'm going to be speaking at a conference. Um, well, technically, I've already spoken at a conference because it's a, a pre-recorded filmed conference, um, but a conference that's happening on June the 24th, which is a, a church planting conference called Multiply. Now, we're just going to watch a one minute video of Bishop Rick Thorpe talking about the conference and uh, then Sophie's going to ask me some questions all about it. I want to invite you and your team to the Multiply Church Planting online conference on Thursday the 24th of June. No one tribe or network or denomination or tradition or methodology can reach this nation with the gospel, but together we can. Together is this year's theme. It's about listening to different voices to approach God's mission for us in different ways. 
So come and be inspired, challenged and equipped by a whole host of experts and practitioners right to where you are. Sign up with your team at ccx.org.uk forward slash conference and see you there. So this is really exciting, Joy. Um, there's this conference going on. Can you just, um, Bishop Rick briefly talked about it, but can you just like outline for us what what is the conference? Yes, well, it's um, a conference, I think it's in its maybe fourth year now, which gathers people from right across the country. The first um, couple of conferences, there was one in the north and one in the south, so that it was easy for people to go to. And then after that, uh, last year it was online and this year online too. And what's, what's quite interesting about this conference is it's trying to draw together um, people right across the breadth of uh, church traditions. So it isn't just Anglican, but equally uh, in, in terms of the Anglican church, it brings together Anglo-Catholic church leaders and charismatic church leaders and everybody in between um to talk about how we can be involved in church planting and growing the church and how are you involved and is it how you expect it to be involved joy well there therein lies the story so i had a phone conversation with somebody um with with a church leader um probably in January time and we just had a 10 minute phone conversation and he was kind of saying you know what what sorts of things are you involved in at the moment um and I was wondering where this conversation was all going and he said oh we're, we're thinking that we might ask you if you would like to be involved as a speaker at this conference and I said oh that's really sweet of you thank you you know and we arranged to have another conversation well this second conversation that we arranged was an 8.30 in the morning meeting with, with me and Christian, the guy who uh, I'd spoken to first, and Bishop Rick. And I'm thinking, gosh, it's unusual that they would want me to speak to Bishop Rick, knowing that this is a conference with, you know, maybe 70 or so speakers uh, across the day doing lots of short talks. I was just thinking, oh, this will be great. We'll have a nice chat and I'll be doing, you know, maybe like a bit of a seminar. That'll be absolutely Absolutely fine. Well, when I got into that meeting, I discovered that I was one of the six keynote speakers for the day um, in the illustrious company of lots of other um, quite significant church leaders. I, I, I have to be honest and say I have never been more shocked in my life life and not only shocked but also terrified because these are people who've planted churches with thousands of people in them you know or people who have planted churches around the world and uh, then they had invited little old me to speak and I've got to tell you um yeah, when uh, Brian Wilson and, uh, and you and I and, and Caleb and Claire were talking uh, about this service planning. I said, um, I have never felt so insecure about my gifts, my calling, my skills and what I can bring um, as when I realised I was going to be speaking at this conference and had no clue what to speak about. It raised all sorts of uh, difficult stuff for me. And Brian said, oh, that'll be great. You can tell the church about what makes you insecure. So here I am telling the church <laughs> that preparing for this conference made me really, really anxious. But um, yeah, it's it's done now and it's recorded. So uh, it'll be going out soon. <laughs> yeah, so the process process was so, a little stressful um maybe not quite what you anticipated or yeah and I think what was challenging as well was trying to work out what exactly to speak about so I can give you a little kind of uh, sneak peek now um I'm going to be talking mainly about um the process of being used by God to help remove the obstacles that stop people from being able to encounter Jesus. So I'm asking the question of church planting, what does it mean to actually clear the path 
so that people can hear um, the message of Jesus and can encounter his love. So it's a 10 minute talk and uh, I've been super, super grateful to um, the team at St. Thomas's Crooks who have filmed me and done all of uh, that kind of side of technical stuff for me. Uh, they've been real friends to me in that process and, and to us. So it is recorded now. There is a talk, it is in existence, maybe a minute too long. Um, so yeah, we're just waiting now for the conference on June the 24th. So how can we be involved and how can we be praying for you? Well, I'm really hoping that um, our, our staff team, um, I'm going to uh, host the conference in my garden, I think, uh, if we can manage to get the screen working out there. So um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to kind of sit around and, and watch some of the uh, conference content together and uh, talk about the content uh, together. And if anyone uh, would really like to be involved in that, you are really welcome to join us. Just, just let me know and uh, we will definitely include you in that day so that that's an open invitation to people who would like to be involved maybe if there's too many people will have to migrate to church or something and watch it um, but yeah people are really welcome to get in, involved and, and watch the conference um also just be praying i think it's a really great opportunity uh to be thinking about growing the church you know covid's been a unique time for everybody and uh, all churches have been impacted by that and as we start reconnecting we have to look at, at, at as many as possible different ways that we can engage with people who don't know about jesus you know that the church is not an easy environment to join for people who've never set a foot inside our building before and so like Suzanne's doing today uh, restarting messy church on wing gardens there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach and we really have to think about how we can share the good news that we know of God in ways that other people people can access so uh, I'm, I'm really up for that conversation and uh, looking forward to June the 24th Great. Can I pray for you really quickly? Heavenly Father, yes, thank please. you so much for Joy. Um, thank you that you've given her this opportunity. And I pray that um, as she's recorded the talk, that you'll be speaking through those words on the day and that speaking into people's hearts and people might hear what she has to say. And yeah, the, the whole conference um, might really uh, work in people's hearts and they might um, begin to begin to explore church planting a bit more and feel empowered um to go and do that and Lord God we pray for yeah joy as as the message goes out on Thursday we pray this in Jesus name amen Amen. Thank you so much, Sophie. Uh, great to see you. Uh, okay, so now we are going to speak to Josh Stevens. Now, Josh may not be known to all of you, but Josh is the musical director of Steel City Choristers, which is the choir that meets in our church building, of which Moses is a member, and um, practicing now once again, twice a week after uh, the lockdown uh, made it impossible to practice until, well, very, very recently. So Josh, I wanted to ask you, you're really welcome to St John's this morning, I wanted to ask you what's happening for the Steel City Choristers at the moment? Well, as you said, Joy, well, first, I just want to say hello, good morning, it's amazing to be here, uh, and, it, and it's so wonderful to be part of your worship and to see your worship. Um, what's going on for the Seal City Chorus as well, as you've said, we've got quite a big rehearsal schedule, we rehearse twice a week, um, and really we, hopefully, if it wasn't for Covid, we'd be going out into church communities to support church communities with their worship and providing a really good musical provision for them, but because of Covid we've had to be quite creative about that, which we've uh, which we have been over the last few months with recordings and performances and things online, as we all have. Um, but some of the some of the really exciting things that we're up to at the moment and preparing for and looking forward to are a couple of performances across the coming term. But actually, our most important work and our most exciting work are some of the projects that we're working on. And one of the projects that we are preparing for is our Reasons to Sing project. We're working with um, 
the Parson Cross Initiative um, organization um, to really bring together communities and people to connect through song and to connect through, if you like, mm -hmm. their, mo their most favorite song that gives them a real sense of joy or a real sense of sadness or a really strong emotive feeling and potentially of a story. And then we want to collect people's stories and collect people's favorite songs, bring them together and enable the choir to sing those, to enable people to be part of what the choir is doing um, in a larger scale to run community workshops through that and to increase the visibility and the accessibility to what we're doing. So that's kind of our big exciting thing at the moment. Yeah, that is super exciting. And actually, uh, people from St John's, if they wanted to get involved in that, what, what would they need to do? Well, there's a number of ways. Uh, they could contact uh, us or, or me. You could go through our website, um, Steel City Choristers, um, or you could email steelcitychoristers at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us through all our social media. We definitely have a very active Facebook account. Um, and I suppose if everyone forgets all of that, they could maybe ask you, Joy, because you are uh, actually quite central to our organisation as our pastoral liaison officer. So uh, they could ask you as well. They could. And uh, people have been recording videos, haven't they, of, of them talking about their favourite song. And uh, the, the videos that have been recorded so far are very illustrious classical pieces. And I was thinking, ah, oh, can I really talk about my favourite pop song? So I, I, I might book the trend and record a video talking about, you know, something completely different. But it's, it's really exciting to be seeing children uh, back in the building singing together. I'm always absolutely amazed by the quality of the noise that even just a few children singing together after months of uh, absence that just the way that they're able to make such an incredible noise together and um, we know that Sophie's going to be doing a youth work session uh, starting I think this week isn't it with um, young people uh, for half an hour um, on a Monday but just thinking about our young people uh, at St John's if people wanted to get involved in the choir is is that a possibility? Yeah absolutely absolutely and we're always on the lookout for new members um, and you don't have to have a, any children don't have to have any musical experience whatsoever and we put them through a little uh, light-hearted audition which is quite fun I think and uh, we just get them to do some uh, singing back. So I sing and then they sing back and we just get them to sing happy birthday. And, you know, if, if, if they can manage all that, then that's sort of a really good sign. So it's a really easy process. The, the premise of the choir and the premise of working uh, with these young people is that we're able to give them the skills and give them the tools that they need to create, as you say, such a wonderful sound as a community. So it's really not important that, you know, they, they're good at singing or they've had any singing experience. Fantastic. And if we uh, were gonna be praying for um, Steel City Choristers, how, how can we best pray for you and for the choir? I think you can probably best pray for us um, by hopefully praying for the longevity of the project for our young people, especially during these COVID times as they're having to readjust. Um, and also for us to hopefully make a meaningful impact uh, and engage fully with the communities that um, we work with and work for. Fantastic. Well, um, members of St John's, you heard it here first. Please do be praying for, for Josh and for the team and for the Steel City Choristers and for the children uh, who really have had a, a very tumultuous year and are, are just getting back into singing together again. So uh, we're really grateful for, for what you're doing, Josh. Um, and we love hosting the choir. Thank you so much. It's great to see you this morning. Thank okay. You. So we are going to uh, put our young people into their breakout groups right now. So if you are a young person, you have the opportunity to join your breakout group, I think with Sophie this morning. I've just seen Sophie whiz off my screen and uh, we're going to invite Ken to come and bring this morning's reading, which is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4.
We're not keeping this quiet, not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believed it, so I said it. We say what we believe. And what we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. For instance, we know that when these bodies of ours are taken down like tents and folded away, they will be replaced by resurrection bodies in heaven. God made, not handmade. And we'll never have to relocate our tents again. Sometimes we can hardly wait to move. And so we cry out in frustration. Compared to what's coming, living conditions around here seem like a stopover in an unfurnished shack and we're tired of it. We've been given a glimpse of the real thing, our true home, our resurrection bodies. The spirit of God whets our appetite by giving us a taste of what's ahead. He puts a little of heaven in our hearts so that we'll never settle for less. That was brilliant. And uh, in case you were wondering what on earth was that Bible version, it was from the message, which I absolutely love because Eugene Peterson, who did the paraphrase for us, just conveys Paul's excitement and um, trust and enthusiasm. So I just love the message and keep turning back to it to find out what is really being said. Now, Joy had last week off. Of course, when you're retired, every week is a week off. A few retired people at the moment probably shouting at the screen, but um, we did manage to get it away too. And we went over to Liverpool to follow up some family links uh, for Carol. And you may not be surprised to know that we used Google Maps to find our way there. Some of you may be groaning at that. Some of you may be going, yeah, go for it, because we've got different views on sat navs and things, haven't we? But there are three ways in which I think, at least three ways in which I think, knowing God is rather like using Google Maps. And here they are. He always knows where you are, even if you don't. He always shows you the best way and he can tell you if there's danger ahead. And going to Liverpool, I also discovered one other thing. I get lost if I don't pay attention. Maybe it's like that with you, with God. Now, that's about as far as you can push that illustration because Google Maps can get it wrong or choose some pretty weird routes. As newcomers, you might sympathize with the idea that we even use Google Maps to find our way around Uta Bridge. And after a bit, we began to think, we don't think locals would go this way. So sometimes we say to each other, I think this is a sat nav route. So maybe you shouldn't really be putting all your trust in Google Maps, but it struck me, particularly in that message version, just how completely Paul trusts God. Jesus had said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And you can see that Paul is so completely saturated with Jesus 
In fact, he himself puts it in Christ. He's soaked in Christ and Christ is soaked into him. But Paul can't imagine any other way and any other truth and any other life. Let's look at the things he says in this passage. He says, we're not keeping this quiet, not on your life. Paul's faith was for sharing, not something to be kept private. He says, what we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. And we know that Paul had met the risen Jesus on the road to Damascus. So he didn't need any more convincing. And he says in this passage, more and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. And we know that all through his journeys, Paul had witnessed signs and wonders and healings and deliverances. He'd seen towns and cities transformed. It was like Jesus was still there. Hang on, wait a moment. Jesus is still there. It's God's power in action. That's what grace is. Someone called it the empowering presence of God. And Paul experienced that day after day after day. He even said this, even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. Paul experienced God's power. That's God's grace. So regularly that the challenges he faced couldn't put out God's supernatural life inside him. Now, I guess that some of Paul's first readers will have been new to Christian things maybe like some of us. And some of them might have been believers for some time. But when Paul wrote this letter, I think he wanted to show all of them and all of us a whole new level of living. Do you dare to believe that God could be as real to you as he was for Paul? Now, Paul did know how tough things can be. Several times he tells his friends what life on the road for, evan for an evangelist was like. But he could keep going and he could keep sharing the good news of Jesus because his perspective was different. He's not put off by difficulties because he knows, as he says, these hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. The things we see now are here today and gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. Paul experienced the present in a whole new way, and he was also absolutely certain about what would happen after his death. For Paul, there was no more wishful thinking and telling the kids that granny is a star in the sky looking down on them. Now, the reason I mention that is because once I had to bury an old lady's ashes in our churchyard and the family gathered round the rather small hole in the ground because all we were burying was a casket with her ashes in. And her grandson was there. And I think he was probably about six or seven. And he was looking at the ground and he was looking at the casket next to it, about to go into the ground, into the hole. And he looked to me like he was wondering how his gran could fit in such a small space. So I bent down, I stopped the service and I bent down and I asked him, what does a spaceman wear in space? Well, he got that pretty quickly, 
And he said, well, it's a space suit, isn't it? I asked him what a diver wore under the sea. And he managed that one too pretty well. He said, well, it's a diving suit. So then I asked him what his body was. And he looked a bit puzzled at that one. So I had to prompt him a bit, but eventually he realized it was his earth suit that he needed it to be on earth, to cope with gravity and air pressure and to stay alive. And I said to him, your grandma has got a new body now. It's a new body just right for being in heaven. Her old body was worn out and she doesn't need it now. I was able to say that because Paul had said something similar as we heard today. When these bodies of ours are taken down like tents and folded away, they will be replaced by resurrection bodies in heaven. God made, not handmade. And we will never have to relocate our tents again. Paul knew a lot about tents. He sometimes made them for a living. He knew that a tent is a shelter used by people on the move. For Paul, his body was a temporary container. Bits were wearing out and falling off, but it didn't matter to him. And why is that? Because he could say, we've been given a glimpse of the real thing, our true home, our resurrection bodies. The Spirit of God whets our appetite by giving us a taste of what's ahead. He puts a little of heaven in our hearts so that we'll never settle for less. God's grace, God's empowering presence can make all the difference in your life and in my life. You can begin to see in a new way. You can begin to think in a new way. And you can begin to act in a new way. Because God's transforming power is available to you and me right now. And his spirit will give you a taste of what's ahead. He can put a little bit of heaven in your heart, hearts right now if you ask him. Would you like to join me as we ask God to make himself more and more real to us each day? Father God, we do want to hear you more. We want to see what you're doing and we want to join in the wonderful things you're doing to bring your kingdom in. And so fill us afresh, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, your grace, your power, so that we can do the things you're calling us to do. If this is the first time you've heard what God has done for you, then do please get in touch. We'd love to encourage you. And some of you I know have clocked up a good few miles in your journey of life. But if some of this was new, if this was a fresh thought for you, then do please get in touch because we'd like to help you with that. And if you've earned up a lot of air miles, but you've been freshly reminded of these amazing truths, then surely the message we've got is one that needs sharing in the amazing power of God's grace. Bless you all. Thank you. so much Jeremy really really powerful words and so refreshing to hear them in uh, that message translation uh, I love the idea of small potatoes um, so uh, let's continue to digest what it is that Jeremy has shared with us as we worship we're going to uh, sing now good good father
together now and we're going to pray um, beginning by praying for ourselves and uh, then praying for those who are closest to us and then reaching out and uh, praying for wider concerns and uh, praying for our world. So shall we pray together? You may want to put your hands out in front of you, you may want to close your eyes, uh, do whatever is the most comfortable for you. So let's pray. So Lord, we, we take the time now to acknowledge who you are. We take the time to reflect on the words that Jeremy spoke about our relationship to you, about our future hope to be united with you completely. We offer you this morning our earthly bodies. We give thanks for them. We acknowledge their frailty 
and their weakness. We ask you to help us to know how, how best to care for them. But we also acknowledge our hope in you that one day we will not be reliant upon our frail and broken bodies any longer. And we put our trust in your promise of resurrection life. If we ourselves are experiencing any physical infirmity right now, or if um, those that we love are impacted by ill health at this time, we offer that to you. We pray that we could know your healing power. We pray that we could know your restoration. And we think of those who we love uh, facing ill health and infirmity. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would be poured out powerfully upon those whose bodies are frail and suffering at this time. We thank you for your goodness, for your kindness that we've just sung about. And we pray that we would be able to entrust every area of our lives into your good and safe keeping. We come before you today and acknowledge our weaknesses in our physical health, in our mental health, in our capacity to make good choices, in our ability and our will to follow you. We acknowledge that we aren't always as good or as able as we would like to be. But we offer ourselves wholeheartedly to you in the knowledge that you see us, you know us, and you love us completely. We pray that your love, your power, and your resurrection hope would be transformative for our perspective right now. And as we think about your transforming power, we pray for our world. We think of those people that we encounter in our daily lives who need to experience your touch, your kindness and your love. In a moment of quiet, we hold those people before you. And we think of our world and the many challenges that are ongoing right now. We pray for all of those caught up in the conflicts in Israel and Palestine. We pray that you would raise up on both sides of that complicated conflict peacemakers who will seek to bring reconciliation. We pray, Lord, for an end to hostilities that have impacted those nations for so, so many years. We pray that you would bring your peace. We pray for India and all other nations who are being so overwhelmed by COVID right now. We pray for a swift rollout of vaccinations. We pray for your healing power to sweep across those places where medical resources are low and hard to come across. We pray that you would equip us with generosity 
so that we're able to respond to the needs that we see. Lord, where um, there are places in this world where suffering is extreme, we pray that you would help us to see the tiny things that we can do to alleviate the suffering of others. So would you show us, Lord, what it is you're calling us to respond to? And would you enable us to respond effectively? And Lord, as we think about the week ahead, we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. That you would equip us to see our lives through your perspective. We pray that we would hear your voice and know your love. And we pray that as your sent ones, we would be able to go out into the world and share your love, your generosity, your goodness with those who we meet. So fill us up, Lord Jesus, with your Holy Spirit and send us out into your world, we pray. Amen. We're going to um, be ending the service in just a moment and uh, there will be the opportunity for you to get on with the rest of your day. But if you want to stay and uh, join us for coffee, we will be going into breakout groups in five minutes time and you would be so welcome to uh, just grab a coffee and chat to people in that group for 15 minutes or so after the service. So whatever your day and your week holds uh, going forward, I pray that you would really know God's presence and his blessing. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.